Whiskey Tango Charlie, welcome to another episode. And hopefully we can open up your mind as we open up your palate, Charles. Wow. It's so often we talk about, you know, if everyone enjoyed vanilla ice cream, it would be a very vanilla world. Pretty plain. Yeah, pretty plain <laughs> stuff, yeah. So, you know, good. G glad that we don't. And uh, glad we have uh, people with um, a wide range of palates and, and uh, things that they enjoy. And, and uh, Troy, you, you brought something in today. What, what are we doing here? Yeah, so obviously like we do every episode is we try to uh, open up your mind to other bourbons and other whiskeys throughout the United States. And today we have a Texas rye. Uh, obviously I'm the rye guy, so uh, very partial to, to rye. But Charles, this is a barrel pick. Cask strength um, from Skips. Yes. <laughs> Our friend at Skips, so we yeah. met out there in uh, um, New Braunfels. So um, for those of you that aren't aware of Skips, there are two uh, distinct locations or two states, Colorado and Texas. Mm. And uh, he does about 100 barrel picks a year. This happens to be one of his uh, balconies, right? Balconies, a Texas rye cask strength. Uh, Troy, I'm just going to say this, this one probably won't be for the faint of heart. Um, how about 129.6? So almost 130. So Charles, as you go ahead and take off the uh, childproof wrapper <laughs> that's, oh, that's on top of that thing. Hang um, on to your hats. What here. we want to share with you today is with this almost 130 proof spirit, on what we've got to do to actually pull out what really is in that bottle. So 130 might not be what's desired, Charles. Wow, may not be, it may not be. This is so dark. Uh, I think it's very indicative of, of what I call, you know, the Texas juices that we've seen. Um, this is dark, <laughs> I mean dark. So, a little splash in here. Let's get and some nose. Oh, Lord. Chocolate, right out, like, immediately. Huh. Wow. And I didn't even let it breathe any. No. I mean, just, you just corked that thing. Yeah, and, and just darkness. Um, so, just, just a heads up here. So, really, you would think on 130 proof, you're gonna get a lot of nose, a lot of that on the nose, D not. I mean, it's surprisingly soft. Don't get much proof on the nose. Wow. So Charles, that's not an oak. I don't smell the oak, right? So uh, Texas gets a, a bad rap a lot of the times because uh, you know the temperature there is different. A lot of people say that you know, a lot of those bourbons and whiskeys that are coming out of Texas are young and have a, a, a stringent taste to them. We've not experienced that as much, Charles. You went ahead and got in that thing. I went ahead and got a sip. Wow. So this particular one says um, wow. aged at least 40 months. So you think about this, 40 months. Um, three years in the Texas heat. And I'll say this, not 130 proof uh, on the burn or the, you know, like you would think of a big pow. What I do get is a big pow of flavor profile, like yeah. boom. And it's like, um, Complex. I get cocoa. Smokiness. Like so I, cocoa. Yes. So I picked up the chocolate right away. Yep. Um, and the cocoa is uh, both sides of the tongue, long finish. And Charles, it really, you, you hit it right on the head. It drinks more like about a 93, 90 proof. It, it really, and I mean, it's hard to get stretched in. Um, you know, and I'm waiting for the secondary thing to come in. You know, sometimes those high proofs, you know, the, you get the swallow and it, and, it, and it finally comes on you, but it, it's not there. Um, chocolatey, 
I, I'm going to compare this. I'm going to, I'm going to compare this a little bit to our friend uh, Seth down in Alabama. It's about the same height across the United I want to States. Say, right? yeah, what do they call it? Longitude or latitude? The latitude that runs across the U.S. Okay. Um, but think about that. The Alabama heat, Texas heat. We've got a lot of heat. A lot, you can't keep it in the barrel very long or it's, just gonna, it's all going to evaporate out. Right. Um, the things that I really enjoy about the Detling bourbon is those chocolate notes that, that he is famous for. Um, this, this has some characteristics like that. I'm not going to say exact, but, yeah. but similar. So we're getting off pace. So oh. we're not reviewing this particular bourbon. As much as we're kind of reviewing what happens when we proof it down and it and did the distiller give us what's the true essence? Because this is a barrel pick. Right. So some people spent some time, right? So Skip and his people right. spent time to choose this. But if we proof it down, let's talk about proofing it down, Charles. Pr bringing it back. So... So we have, um, I love to do these things uh, with our tasting folks here when we do, we do events. Um, cask strength, so, so we're, we're, cask strength may be not all that you really, it may not be your palate, right? And the, the really cool test is, is to take some distilled water, bottled water, distilled water. This is uh, distilled water. And I'm gonna throw Maybe just, I'm gonna start with one drop, just. All right. So all I did is one drop of water, I'm dropping that proof just a smidgen. And I wanted to see, I wanna give that a chance to see what happens to this juice when you bring it back just a hair bit. And, um, and, and kind of take it, it through this progression. Smell. It changed, wow. one drop changed the smell drastically. Nose is completely different. So yeah. tobacco. I went from chocolate to tobacco, like a pipe tobacco, right? Like a sweet pipe tobacco. How do you go from chocolate to tobacco? It's funny, that, that kind of changes on the palate too. So the flavor profiles were really hanging to the back, sort of in back. And then one drop of water, I can feel the flavor moving Forward, it's almost I, to the tip of my tongue. I, I am almost, it is almost at the very tip yeah. end. It's at the front, yeah. very front. And I'm gonna say probably another drop is gonna push it right off the edge. <clears throat> um, so a longer finish coating the tongue. So originally back of the tongue, both sides. And now, and, and down. Yes. And, and one drop, flavor forward, coming forward. It's all over, and um, I'm I'm going to do one more test because I'm going to do I'm going to just do a, a couple of drops in here. Just dude, you're getting crazy. I just want to speed it up. I, I'm I'm really anxious here. So we talk about where someone might want to take some ice, right? Right. And uh, put some ice in a glass, large cube, any kind of cube. Put your bourbon in there and watch it move. From right. the very first taste, Charles, yep. all the way across to the very last taste, that bourbon, that whiskey will move. Move. Right? So you went multiple drops. Several drops. What I noticed and now, we went from chocolate to, I almost went to honey on the, my nose. That's what I'm getting, sweet and honey. So I'm still, I'm still with tobacco, uh, more of a cigar type tobacco not the pipe, the sweet, so the sweetness of the tobacco taste or smell went away for me because I only put one drop in it. Charles, put several. Several. So, wow. Way forward now, totally forward on the, on the, on the profile. And it really got sweeter it got a much sweeter finish. I want to say it's getting almost honey type. I still get I still get hints of chocolate. I still get the tobacco, but the sweetness has just opened up with additional water in it. So, you know what it really tells me Troy on this thing here is is um this is one 
Sure, on a cold winter day, enjoy this, sip it neat, and, it, and have a good time with it. Warm weather like we got going on right now, <laughs> this is my favorite. This is the Yeti with the ice, and just pour it in there and let the ice keep melting because here's what's gonna happen with this 130, almost 130 proof stuff. That flavor profile is gonna keep moving with you and it's not gonna go to the bad on you. It's, it's gonna continue to go in a good direction and I think it's gonna provide, I mean, how, many, how much ever you wanna put in that Yeti, but you know, you could easily sit down with 30 minutes, 45 minutes and sipping on that and um, have a good time. So I hope what we've demonstrated here, I've put a third drop in mine, uh, much different than Charles. He put multiple drops in his. Now I'm tasting the heat. So I've lost a lot of the flavor and it's very, very hot. Mm. And Charles, this is not necessarily about this particular bottle, but more so how you enjoy your bourbon right. and how you can take a bottle uh, that might not be desirable and turn it into a more desirable bottle. You, you just never know, right? So it, it could be you, you've opened it, uh, maybe that first couple sips, maybe you've sipped it, put it back on the shelf, you've retried it, and, and it maybe for whatever reason it's just not hitting your palate. I would encourage you, use, use a couple of drops of water, take, take some tests, have some fun mm -hmm. with it. I think sometimes you will find a drop or two of water. Um, if it may not initially have hit your palate, you may have may, may find it. It sort of opens up and it changes. Or worst case scenario, you just kind of say, it's just not my palate and that's okay. It's, it doesn't make it a bad uh, pour. It just means, that, you know, this particular one may not be just for my palate. And, um, at that point, I think it's uh, maybe a little ginger ale or something like that, right? <laughs> and there is that uh, point of no return where you've added too much to it and you've really lost the essence of what that distiller was trying to put into that bottle because uh, every distiller is looking for a different profile yep. and looking for something different. Yep. Um, this happens to be a barrel pick that the, uh, the individuals that picked this barrel wanted it to be brought to you the way that it was. Whiskey Tango Charlie, we hope that we're bringing to you <laughs> something that can open up your mind and open up your palate so that you can enjoy spirit a little better. Hey, Amen. Cheers. Cheers, folks.